Hi everyone, welcome back to Stamp with Anna. And today I'm going to show you um, a card that I'm sending out as a thank you card to my customers for their um, January orders. Now, normally when I send out customer thank you cards for the month, I design the card and mass produce it and send it to everyone. But this time I thought I would do something different. And for all of the uh, customers who ordered for me in January, I'm making each one of them their very own um, card so that using one of the products that they've ordered so that they can see a um, different way to use them to use their orders. So this one I made um, for a customer who ordered um, some cardstock. And let me just get, she ordered, among other things, she ordered Rococo Rose, I'm sorry, ink pads, Rococo Rose, um, soft sea foam, um, seaside spray, and so I thought I'd put them together and make this card. And I like the way they're, nice, they're all nice soft colors. This is uh, really, I, I love this card. Um, but I'm gonna make another one like this for a customer who ordered different colors of inks. She ordered the whole Regal collection, which has, um, if, you've, if you're familiar with Stampin' Up, they're very rich colors. Um, cherry cobbler, crushed curry, um, garden green, shaded spruce, and things like that. Rich Razzleberry, which is one of my favorite. So this is going to look completely different because it's gonna be made with a um, different color palette. So let me push this one aside and we'll get started. My card base for the card is Old Olive and it's five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that is just a um, standard A2 size. It's looking for my bone folder so I can give this a nice crisp Hold. And then I have, as my matting piece, I'm going to use crushed curry. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to attach that right onto my uh, card base. And we're going to center that right in the middle. And there is a nice uh, large border. And this piece of crushed curry is 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths. Then I have a piece of white. And this is uh, Whisper White because I'm still using up my Whisper White. But I'm sure, as you know by now, Whisper White has been replaced with Basic White. And my understanding is the only difference is um, it's just the Basic White is a little brighter than the, um, a little smudge here, is a little brighter than the Whisper White. So this one is where I'm going to do my stamping. So I'm going to put my base away and I'm going to bring in my stamparatus because we're going to use a hint that what's called the hinge technique with the stamparatus. So I'm going to put my card right up into the corner there and I'm going to close it and hold it down with my um, magnets. So let me bring in, I am using the stamp set so much happy and I'm going to use this happy uh, part of this stamp here and the balloons and the birthday. So I'm going to put the stamp pad right behind my plate here so that I get a little bit of support there. And then I'm going, what I'm going to use is my crushed curry. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap and swing it down. Lift it back up and I can see that I didn't get enough ink on the bottom of my happy and that's the beauty of the Stamparatus. I can just re-ink that, bring this down and it's going to line up perfectly. Oh geez, and I'm still seeing I didn't get enough on my age. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right, great. Now I'm gonna bring in my chamois and I'm going to clean off the crushed curry. And the next color I'm going to use is Old Olive, but I want that to drop down a bit. So I'm gonna take my Stamparatus off its hinge and just swing it down one more. And stamp this up with my crushed, excuse me, my Old Olive. And I can see I have a little bit of a smudge deal. One second while I clean that off. Stampin' Up! does sell those little um, squares. They're plain spots, ink spots, I think they call them. And I do have a bunch of them. I haven't taken them out to do anything with them yet. But what you do is you ink them up with your reinker, and then they're perfect when you're using the Stamparatus. Because you get ink just where you want it to be. 
and you don't have to go through this because my ink pad is very uh, juicy. So I'm just gonna take that little bit off right there and swing it down, press, and up it goes. I want a little tiny bit on my H right there. And there we go. Now, the last color I'm going to use is my Rich Razzleberry. So again, I'm gonna come in and clean off my stamp, get all that green off of it. I'm gonna lift my plate and bring it down to the next hinge and do the same thing. I'm gonna bring in my Rich Razzleberry, stamp up my stamp, and press. And there I have, happy, happy, happy. Now, the advantage of using the Stamparatus is that these happies are perfectly lined up and they are equally spaced in between. And that um, helps in getting it done without a lot of headaches. So, there we go, there we have that. Now we're going to stamp our um, balloon. And I'm going to use the string of the balloon. And I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper and put it underneath this because I'm not using the whole balloon and I don't want it to smudge on my, um, my work surface. So I'm gonna ink that up. Now this is a very, very thin um, stamp. So it is easy to rock it and then you end up with a little shadow. But I'm going to try my hardest as best as I can. I'm going to go straight down, straight up, and there we go. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the balloon, ink that up in Rich Razzleberry, and drop that right at the top of that string. Whoops. Now I didn't get a really even um, image there, and that's fine because I'm going to try to uh, add some dimension to this. But you'll see what I mean. Now, lastly, I'm gonna take this little bow, and again, it's a small little stamp. And the way I found to line it up best so that it kind of most likely is gonna end up right here is take this little notch. Let me see if I can show you this. This little notch right here. Right, see right there? I'm gonna take that and line that up with this string. And chances are it's going to go exactly where it's supposed to go. There you go, perfect. So there is my balloon. Now I'm going to work on the birthday part here. And for that, I have a little, I had a little scrap piece of cherry cobbler, not cherry cobbler, oh my goodness, crushed curry. I'm having a, a day and a half here. Um, and I have inked up my stamp that says birthday. And with the old olive, I'm going to stamp that up, ink that up, I mean. Oh, I just re-inked re all of my stamp pads and they're really, really juicy. That's why I keep having these messes here. And I'm going to just drop that down and straight up. Perfect. Now I want to cut that. And to make that die, I'm going to use the stitched the stitched rectangles. And I have all of these great dies. I'm going to use the smallest little one here. Now, as you can see, this is bigger than what I want there. So I'm going to show you how to cut that down to size. Exactly how you want it. Okay, so here's my new cotton emboss machine, plate one, plate two, and I'm going to put that right there, and I'm going to stand up so I can look right down at it so you get a better um, idea of where you're, how you're lined up, and I'm going to line that up exactly where I want it. And the, the Y is a little cut off, but that's fine with me. I don't mind that. I really should get the, um, the magnetic plate for this. Maybe on my next order. And I'm going to drop that down and run that through. Now, like I said, it's a little big here. So I'm going to take 
my framelit and I'm going to see how it has these little notches here that stitches that were made from the framelit I'm gonna just put this on top and just slide it until it catches on one of those so now that it's nice and secure I know that I'm my stitches are going to all line up and I'm not gonna have so many stitches that it falls apart I'll run that through and back end result is a small tag made from a large die. So the next thing we're going to do is put some mini dimensionals on the back and I have two. Oops, wrong card. <laughs> And I'm going to put that, I'm not going to line it right up next to that. I'm going to bring it down a little bit so that this string looks like it is right behind my banner. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to attach this uh, to my card base. I probably could have done it before I popped that up. but So there's a very thin border here. You can see that right there. Equal that, even that out. Okay. Now I'm going to finish dressing up the front of it and I'm going to take my um, Wink of Stella, clear Wink of Stella, and I'm just going to, oh, before I do that actually, I want to bring in a white, my white gel pen and I'm just going to make this, just make like a little apostrophe on the side. It's just gonna add a little bit of dimension and shading to my balloon and then I'm gonna take my Wink of Stella and just lightly run that all over my balloon so it gives it a little bit of sparkle. Okay, there we go. Now, of course, if you know me, you know that I like embellishments. So I'm going to bring in some jewels and I'm going to just randomly apply some. And I like to do things in three. So I'm going to put one here and kind of you want to design wise you want to make a triangle of some sort you don't want to line them all up together so there's one there's two and here's my third one whoops <laughs> there's my third one like i said and i'm going to bring that over here so you can see that there is a triangle so now the front of my card is done on the inside of my card I have another piece of um, Whisper White and I'm going to, it's smaller and I want the larger border to mimic the front of the border, the front of the card. So what I'm going to do here is I have the stamp that says to celebrate you and that's because <clears throat> the stamp set says happy to have you in my life, happy to celebrate you, happy to know you. So. I want in the inside of my card to simply say celebrate you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to just cover or mask that word too. You could do it with a piece of washi tape. You could do it just with this little piece of paper like I'm doing here. And there we go. I just inked up the part that says celebrate you and now I'm going to take this turn it the right way and just stamp it and when I stamp it I have to remember as far as my placement goes that that two is not going to be included so I'm just going to go straight down straight up and I just have celebrate you so now I'm going to take my stamp and seal and attach it to the inside of my card. So there it is. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Celebrate you. And here it is in the more, the softer tones. The, these, the Rococo Rose and the uh, Seaside Spray are part of the 19, 2019, 2021 um, in colors. And they will be retiring at, in May, I believe. Um, 
and the soft sea foam is part of the subtle. So they do work really nicely together. And again, here it is in the regal colors, old olive, rich raspberry, and crushed curry. Same card, same design, two completely different looks. And I just think that is so, so sweet. If you have any questions at all about this project or any of the products I've used, certainly contact me through my blog, www.stampwithanna.blogspot.com. And while you're here, I really like it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel or give me a like if you like the, the video. And if you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator with whom you work, certainly contact me and I'll be glad to send you off a catalog. Thanks so much and I'll catch you back here later for another video.